one mission where we had been affected, we were, we were supporting a, a Marine patrol. Um, it was, uh, and we had set up a few um, sniper overwatches in a town that was, you know, just to the east of uh, Ramadi, uh, sort of like a, a rest and relaxation peri- uh, uh, town for, you know, the insurgency. So we knew that they were there. We hadn't been very good at finding them in the past. So we had uh, crept in on boats, um, uh, snuck into abandoned houses. So we didn't really upset the family or upset a family order or anything like that. So nobody really knew we were there. Marines got contacted. Uh, they were pinned down by a sniper team. So we had one of our two elements uh, displaced to go uh, find the sniper team right about the same time they were re- they were ready to, you know, go track down these snipers. The sniper team comes out of an alleyway, you know, track suited up and everything, um, and our guys, you know, killed all of them. Um, we were we were at another location just waiting. You know, we figured the firefight was over. And I was just settling, you know, just sitting down, you know, behind uh, a wall, you know, getting ready to take a short nap um, when I heard uh, our corpsman, Jason Guerrero, he, um, an SDV, one guy, he, uh, does that guy have a gun? And I immediately popped up, ran over to the wall, and just cranked off a, a, a 40 mic mic. <laughs> it's like, you know, recon by fire. And, uh, immediately uh, as soon as the grenade exploded you know i was forced back by pkm fire just drove us all back um we were under contact we didn't know how many uh and one of our guys was pretty quickly mark robbins who he was shot through the head um it actually went through his eye uh, and came out the back of his head so we were we were in a bad way we had two of the we had the uh um Assistant ground force commander and the platoon chief were on the roof and they were pinned down. So we were trying to, you know, uh, you know, not only suppress the ambush, but also to uh, get, you know, follow on reinforcements. I couldn't get any of the aircraft uh, to come down. So finally, there was one Marine, the, uh, uh, the, the, I don't know if he was a battalion commander at the time, but he wasn't in the patrol of the Marines that had been pinned down. He was still at the top. He had managed to grab two Humvees. Uh, and he took him up on this this road that was, you know, we it was the it was IED alley. So he had just, you know, four guys in Humvees, and they braved this road, got up, put their guns between, you know, the ambush and us, and we were able to get a, uh, a helo uh, to land. And I was the only one that I was able to convince to come down. The Cobras wouldn't come down. Um, and managed to, you know, get our, you know, our wounded guy, uh, you know, on the helicopter, and he was evacuated. He's, he lived, uh, Mark Robbins. He's a um, detective in Lake County now. I mean, holy shit, how did he survive that? Just, I mean, a PKM round through the fucking eyeball? Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I, me and uh, Jason Guerrero, the medic, we were probably the first ones to actually pull him off this roof. You know, Tim Sulik had drug him to the edge of the, uh, Tim, Tim Sulik and Mitch Hall had managed to drag him to the edge of the roof, and then me and... Uh, Guerrero managed to get him off the roof and get him down. And, uh, you know, I'm doing everything I can, you know, just like they, you know, tell you in medical training, you encourage guys, make, you know, make sure they know they're okay and everything. So I see the hole in the back of his head and I, I can hear him talking. So I'm doing everything you're supposed to do. I'm telling him, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to get you out of here, all the rest. And then I flip him over and I see his eyeball hanging out of his head. And he said, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Oh, you're okay. <laughs> That's fucking nuts, man. And uh, uh, I, don't, I mean, how how did he live? Do you have any idea? <laughs> I mean, well, he didn't have a lot up there to begin with. <laughs> he uh, uh, it was all dead space. Yeah, no, he. Um, wow, I I'm know. assuming he's blind in that eye. Yeah, he he. Yeah, the eye's gone. So the eye was uh, the eye was destroyed. Most of the hearing in that ear was destroyed. I think all the hearing in that ear is destroyed. Um. He, uh, I don't know, it took a long time, but pathways rebuild, and he was, you know, he's he's, still, he's an excellent detective, excellent SWAT team leader. That's incredible. Um, he managed to walk to the helicopter, and he was, there was one point in the firefight, the firefight's still going on. I had set him on a pile of rocks next to the wall. It was out of fire, and uh, it was on the second story of this building, and he was just on a pile of, like, just rubble. 
and um and guys are in another room and uh and they were yelling at mark and mark back up back up you're gonna get hit and he was just sitting on the rocks very quietly you know a, you know, bandage across his head and uh and he picks up a bunch of rocks they go back you know they they, they go back to dealing with the uh, the firefight mark takes the rocks and just whips them at the guys that were just yelling at him <laughs> and they're like we're taking fire from the other way and i'm like no we're okay mark's just <laughs> throwing rocks at you <laughs> man that's wild um how, how did that i mean did you get help get him loaded on the bird and then no he walked so I was I was still dealing with a firefight. Uh, the other team uh, managed to, at that point had managed to run up to our position. Plus the Marines were out front. Um, it's funny because um, years later, when I was coming up with the I, you know, part of the reason that I wrote this book was an effort, you know, to understand that that day, not just that day, but other days. You know, I uh, I got out in two thousand ten. And, uh, well, 2009, I got out in 2009. I was doing some reserve stuff until 2010 was really the last time that I was, I left San Diego and I left uh, the SEAL team for good. A year after that, you know, two events happened. So 2011, you know, may, biggest event in the war on terror, the killing of Osama bin Laden. Three months after that, you know, the largest loss of life in the entire um, war in Afghanistan or the war on terror, you know, happens with the downing of extortion 17. Both of these events you know, involved naval special warfare. And both of these events um, were more than 600 miles away from the closest salt water. I compared those events to, you know, this event that I had experienced, you know, Navy SEALs, you know, fighting an inland war. You know, how did this happen? How did the Navy, you know, create a unit with this breadth of operational, you know, experience or operational? What? How do we get an operational mandate this big? Um where the Marines, you know, we're ahead of the Marines. We're, you know, we're pushing beyond, you know, even what you know, the Marines consider um, their operational area. Um, and as I was thinking through that, and as I was, you know, coming up with the, this idea, you know, I want to write a history book. I went to the uh, SEAL Museum and I convinced them to let, you know, I wasn't an author or anything like that, but I managed to convince them to let me into their archives to see if I could dig around and see if there was any, you know, any sort of book there. Um, that I might be able to write. And I was going through World War II documents, and I found this one this one document that was written in the Vietnam War. It shouldn't have been filed where it was, but it was just there. And it was written by a Rand researcher um, who had been trying to understand that very same question. He'd been a former Force Recon Marine, and he was trying to understand how the SEALs had developed into this you know, land warfare force in Vietnam. And uh, he didn't have a good answer for it, um, so he asked the question but didn't really satisfy the answer but it was this document that kind of stuck in my head for a long time and it wasn't until you know many years later that i realized that this document was written by a guy named frank uh, uh, francis bing west it was he ultimately became a pretty famous author but it was his son that was the marine that came to our rescue in iraq really what are the odds on that yeah that's incredible i mean are you uh a man of faith do you believe in uh, destiny and things like that do you think that that was uh, i don't think i don't think that things like that happen for an accident or are, are accidental so yeah i think there's something i'm not i don't know what but i yeah, yeah that's uh, that's remarkable um was was that firefight the most intense one of the deployment yeah how did it end like what how did you guys finally finish it once we got mark uh in the helicopter then we went through the town you know hunting and uh, we ended up taking another taking another um, uh, building and just waiting until um, nightfall, and uh, a TF-160 came in for us. 